<laughs> so the 1812 overture, full blast. I'm going to contact the regiment and ask them to get a couple of howitzers down here so I can blast off the, ca the cannon piece in, within the music. And I'm going to contact the, um, the household horse cavalry and ask them to send a troop down so I can gallop past. As, as, uh, and I want it all taped. <laughs> I haven't really given much thought to my own because, you know, you can't take these things home with you because, you, you know, you've got to yeah. think about it logically. And, um, but I, I sometimes think, I must write my own funeral <laughs> requests. The, the funny side of this business, there are so many things that are funny, of course. I went into a church, and in the corner, there was um, a beautiful-looking vase and with all this tall pampas grass in. And one of the guys went to the corner and sat down. Well, the bench collapsed. <laughs> and so you've got this timber that suddenly shoots up like this. And for some reason, the vase in, in the corner went up into the air. It's like a comedy film, you know, in slow motion. This vase went straight up into the air like this, about two or three foot. And the pampas grass carried on. <laughs> and <laughs> it just, all, the, all these seeds on it and, and all the bits and pieces, because it was so dry, detached from the main stalks and simply come floating down and covered this guy completely <laughs> in, this, in this seed. And of course you couldn't laugh, but it made a hell of a noise. The British are very funny about death. With some people it scares them, with other people it makes them timid or withdrawn. Um, so if you can help them in any way to smooth things over for them, make it comfortable. And luckily with the chapel here, we've got that uh, background which makes people comfortable. It's a little old chapel. It's, it's been here a long time. It's comfortable. It's, it's peaceful. It's quiet. It's somewhere where they can sit and look at a, a stained glass window and start to think this is a service for someone that we've lost. You know, um, soon those curtains will close and that's our last we'll see of the coffin, let alone the deceased. I've got my own one-man show, which I go around the theatres with, and with my sort of bit of banter and flair for comedy, they enjoy that, so I'm in demand. So this sort of thing is um, really, I'm sort of thinking, well, you know, it's a good retirement job, this, you see, because I can, as long as I can get my legs over this bench, I'll be all right, I'll be able to play, you know, for a good long time. I do enjoy doing it, because that's a service you feel you're giving to somebody. And, of course, if I play some, like when those curtains come round, if I, if I do a little movement like this, you know, uh, They all burst out crying, and it's lovely. <laughs> well, you know, you feel you've done your job, because uh, the, the emotion's got to be there. And, and of course, you know, the English are all with stiff upper lip, and it makes them break down a bit. And I, I feel that's the reaction I want. You know. It sounds daft, doesn't it, trying to make people cry? But I think they need to. They need to, because it's a terrible thing, you know. And, uh, and, and if you can express it, it's better for you. When I first started, I used to get very perturbed about it. And Driving home, I used to think, oh dear, this is, this is too much. But then there's such a lot of banter out the back there and that we all sort of chip in. And But it's, it, it's like being in the theatre, really, because once you walk out on the stage here or sit at this instrument, there is a completely different atmosphere. It's com You know, I mean, you, you do your job. That's the thing. And it's like you do when you're working. When, with my evening job. <laughs>
Oh, I've been doing this cemetery work for 24 years. And, uh, it's filled up a bit since I've come. A lot more staff when I came here. There's 10 here when I came here. There were just two of us. We expect the same amount of work out of us, but uh, less staff. If I'm out and somebody asks what I am, if I tell them I'm a grave digger, they say, ooh. So um, I don't tell them. <laughs> so just tell them I'm a gardener. Or I'd be known to tell them I'm a sculpturer. And they've got away with it. So, yeah, earth sculpture. So. Oh, Fred. Lucky of you made me jump. All right. Yeah, you? Yeah, nearly ready. Yeah. When I first started the Great Diggers job, I'd just gone out the back door and this head loomed over the wall and went, Good morning, I'm Julian. He said, I'm the grave digger down here. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm fed, I'm pleased to meet you. I said, I've just moved in. It was a bit of a shock, actually, seeing somebody actually talking to you over a six-foot wall. Most disconcerting, but we've got on really well ever since. We like long legs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to slow down a bit. <laughs> My little legs won't keep up. <laughs> How many have we got today? Hundreds. Three? Three. Two, one each. Yeah. There's one between <laughs> us, though. Yeah. It's quite a reasonable job. It's, it suits me anyway. Uh, it probably wouldn't sort a lot of people. A lot of people have the idea that uh, you're, you're actually handling bodies, which is a preconceived notion that should really be dispelled. <laughs> we don't actually take bodies out of boxes to put them into grave coffins, into graves, or into uh, or into cremators at crematorium. Much against the uh, the popular belief that they do actually return the coffins and burn the bodies on their own. Bit of a fallacy, but uh, if you don't know, I suppose it's uh, it's like all jobs, isn't it? If you, if you don't know the ins and outs, the workings of it, then it, um, it 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 gets a lot of myths and legends that go with it, which uh, need a bit of a dispelling from time to time. <laughs> Sunday mornings. Uh, John goes for the sparkling wine, don't you, John? Yeah, I've had to, had to drink a pint, no, a litre and a half of water yesterday to go, before I went to the doctor's. <laughs> and, that, and that nearly killed you, didn't it? <laughs> no, I said to him, be careful when you handle things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you always cool, you Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, get out in that chapel. I've had to hoover up as it is. We're trying to make you earn your money. <gasps> Only money, crikey. They do it the other place. Do you mean we get paid for this? <laughs> oh. Well, listen, I'd better go and get on. It's uh, getting on. Yeah, it's better start work, I suppose. Oh, get things moving. You know, we have a laugh. And we have to. Because otherwise we would literally explode with the pressure. That side, you can have a, a joke. It's not really funny, but it, it's, it's something that, with someone that you're comfortable working with, you know that they will understand what you're, what you're going through. And so, if you snap at someone, you're the best of mates. And they will take that, and they'll tell you, not there's a blinking stupid, and, or something like this. They'll speak openly to you. The only thing is, the respect must be still placed with the coffin and the handling of the coffin must be correct at all times. And we work well together, the small team that we have here. Oops. Sorry. Nearly.
You want any more than that? I'd like more than one shovelful. <laughs> Get it filled up. You do the other one over there as well, or not? Yeah, probably. If I get one time, the rabbit's like. I get time before I go. Do you want to pick? Well, we all do, yeah. I'll give you three shovels to let you take your pick. That should confuse you, shouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, you get occasions where you'll get a wrong size. There's a hiccup along the line and the communication breakdown, I suppose, and we get a wrong size. So it's most embarrassing when it does occur, because if you've got like 30 or 40 people standing around a grave and the coffin doesn't go down a the grave, then it can be embarrassing. <laughs> As I know to my cost. Um, it doesn't occur very often. Um, we are very particular about how what we check. I can't what it is. Um, but obviously, like in any job that you do, there's always the possibility that you're going to make an error. And even if it's a genuine error, it doesn't actually make it any easier for the for the mourners who are upset anyway. You know, if you if you make an error, which is why we try as much as possible and go out of our way to make sure it doesn't occur. And touch wood, it's a very rare occurrence, certainly in this cemetery anyway. Norman. Hello, Alice. Two baby boxes. Oh, right. Thanks I understand a lot. you've got the paperwork now. Yeah, they're all signed up now, so Good. we can go ahead. All that's right. the last ones we've got. Okay, so that's fine. So you must be up to date for a while. Yeah, all right then. Not busy? No, a fairly quiet day today. Mm. It's quite nice, actually. Yeah, yeah we're fairly quiet. I think you get hard over the years. You don't dwell that there might be a, a wife and children left behind. You have to cut off, I think, and be very impersonal. Otherwise, you'd, you'd never cope with the job. I mean, people say to me, do children upset you? And I say, no, you can't let it upset you. I mean, there are times you go home and you think, oh, I've had enough today, but by tomorrow, you're fine. It's usually when you're under pressure that uh, uh, things build up. But no, you, you become very hard. Over the hill and by the shoreline. Right. They all seem to come to Brighton because we've got the cliffs and we've got the sea. That's right, and you're within, I mean, you've got the trains as you're well. You're in quite easy travel yeah. distance. Yeah. I mean, we had the guy come across from Germany, didn't we? Mm. Came from Germany, went up to London, got the train back down to Brighton and jumped over the, over the marina. Cliff. That's right in the cliff. It's one of the few along the coast that has got cliffs. Mm, okay. Because it's sort of, it's all along to Seaford and all that, like you've got cliff. But after that and before that sort of thing, you've got nothing. People tend to walk into the sea, whereas mm. here you've got the marina, or you've got three or four places where people can either jump and land on the concrete or um, jump actually jump into the sea. And uh, I think also we've had a lot of people that have used to come to Brighton for holidays. And they decide yes. they're going to commit suicide. And it's that's the place right. they know. They know. Yeah, they know and where they think, most... I know, uh, I'll go back there. I was happy there. And that's right. They know how to get here quickly and, and quietly and, sort of, you know, drive down or, or whatever. We went to the uh, horse in Croydon. Oh, because I was uh, saying I It was the English National Ballet. Yeah. And they were doing a triple bell. Oh, that's good. That was very good. How did you go to the good. Theatre Royal? But it wasn't. No, uh, so I hadn't seen it. We went with the. Uh, the Philharmonic Society, they do a, a trip to, uh, to operas and ballets and things. It was very good. Oh, was good. Very good. Right, that's it. Thank you very much. He died of drowning. Yeah. Yeah. Round about the beginning of this month, he was told that his condition had got worse and he was now bordering full-blown AIDS. So he had to make another appointment.
to go back to increase his medication to keep him stabilised. Uh, and obviously, you know, it's just enough to pitch him over the top. Yeah, it's too much. Mm. Okay, then, we'll put him in the chapel. We have viewings or families just turn up, say, can I come and see the boy? Sometimes you're not quite sure whether to talk to them or just leave them to get on with their grief themselves. Some don't want to talk, do they? No, I think it's... it's... Do you have to play it by ear in and others just want to natter all the time? You know, because I think it's more traumatic when it's uh, an unnatural death and a young person. Uh, but no, it doesn't upset me anymore. I think you've got to remain detached so that you've got somebody there. I mean, they, they want questions answered and they want them answered straight away, which isn't always possible. But they want somebody there that's not grieving with them. Um, they want like a, a concrete the concrete to lean on sort of thing and you know you can't you've got to remain detached and you know you just answer the questions as best you can. I met her in a cemetery, my wife. She used to walk in and out of a cemetery twice, three times a day. And used to wave, say hello, and uh, we got chatting. And uh, sort of got together, really. Had a free Saturday, so <laughs> we got married. <laughs> Might as well work later tonight. What, to finish digging this? Yeah. Right. Because we've got a busy day tomorrow, so we'll get it out tonight. Yeah. When I die, I don't want to um, be buried here. Well, I don't think so anyway. Unless I get, if I get buried alive, it's, perhaps that's different. So. But uh, I'll probably get um, cremated and, and throw, me under, throw me under a bush. But, uh, so I'll be quite happy. Well, I'll say I'll be quite happy to be, well, quite happy. <laughs> It won't be really my worry, I suppose. Hopefully, my wife will worry about it. So. But well, I suppose I prefer to be cremated anyway, one day. Well, I've got another 40 years left in me yet. <laughs> Don't work too hard. No, I won't. Bye. Bye. You still get a lot of people that actually want a burial rather than a cremation, from the point of view of where they go to actually visit their yeah, nearest and dearest. Um, and I think, I suppose, from the grave uh, is much more of a focal point than a crematorium. Certainly if, if they've only actually had the ashes scattered rather than had a memorial plaque. So, mm, yeah, it's changed quite a bit, I suppose, over the last 25 years. Certainly, uh, certainly not as busy on our side as what it is on the crematorium side. I don't know whether it's for the better or for the worse, really, but uh, it's the individual choice, and more people seem to go for the cremation now. But again, as I say, it's it's um, it's probably more to the point of cost these days rather than anything else, because it has gone up astronomically to what it used to be years ago. Um, the grant that the government used to give for thirty pound originally covered the cost of a whole funeral, basic funeral. Now they don't do it, but when they did stop it, which was about five or six years ago now, I think it better about covered the cost of a week. You'll find the service on page twenty-three. The old days of the pauper's funeral, people have the wrong idea. They think mass graves, sackcloth, no minister. It just isn't the case. Jesus said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. If anyone was to visit one of the funerals that I deal with, they wouldn't know the difference between that funeral and any other. Yet shall he live. My job here is the welfare funeral assistant, and I deal with welfare cases. In one of the many categories, uh, but basically, it's anyone that dies with no next of kin, or no funds, or both. Uh, and I go and investigate that, go through their belongings, try and build a picture of their life, see what relatives are left behind, if any, and then try to trace them. If I can, great. And I'll hand the whole thing over to them. But if I can't, then we have to deal with it here. We 
which is paid by the state, and we try and recuperate any monies we can via maybe a bank account if they have one, uh, furniture if it's valuable, maybe, um, high five, anything valuable we can sell, we'll do that to try and recuperate it. It may sound hard and heartless, but it, it, it really isn't meant that way. It's just we have to do these things. Most people will say, well, if my mum died, I do everything I can to pay for the funeral. I do this, I do that. But that's not the case sometimes. Sometimes people just say, don't want to know. And then they have to sign the case over to me. Any relatives? Yeah, we've got some relatives somewhere. We've got to find some evidence of them. Where are they? Got a few leads, but uh, you yeah. know, oh, look out there. Envelope. That's really nice, yeah. Envelopes, addresses, or anything like that. It's right, yeah. about four up here, isn't it? That's it. You got the keys? Nope. Sometimes I can go into a property, they may be a, a great collector of photographs, and you say, This is, and I'll back a photo, me at three, me at 14. Were they in the guides, scouts, that sort of life, you know? Fight their religion from that. You'd be amazed at the things you can find out. What are you doing? I'm not smoking. Well, I've got you a sensitive creature, aren't you? Thanks for working out this one. Nine times out of ten, when I'm involved, there are no relatives. Or if there are, they don't really want to know. And that can be quite frustrating because everyone belongs to somebody. I tell you what we do, we, we chuck a lot of the envelopes and stuff straight into a bag. Yeah. And we'll sort that back at the office. Oh, well, well, yeah, just where you start, you know? I've got some of these, but nothing's right, you know? Yeah, the, the coroner only found a lot of money here, so we've got to really check it out. Yeah. About £6,000 or something. It looks as if they've done a thorough search, but left it a bit untidy. Hello. Right, right it's an insurance policy, whether it's oh, got a picture. current or not. Well, we know what the lady looks like, anyway. Well, I imagine it's fairly recent. Take this picture of her, because it might come useful when you're trying to try yeah. to sell it for something. Yeah. When they find that someone's passed away, people do tend to come at the woodwork. It's, oh, I was their stepdaughter, I haven't seen them for 40 years, but can I go and get a few bits and pieces at the property? And you know in your heart of hearts what they're looking for is the bank book. You know, it's, it's very easy to get cynical in this job. You try not to, but you do. So, on the whole, I, was, I would say, People care, but they have a cut-off point. That's, that's about it, really. Careful. Ming, I think. Ming? Ming, yeah. Don't want to drop it. What, you mean Emperor, as in Flash Gordon? It's the kitchen, I think. Yeah, that's where she died. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I'll put the overall shoes on, Bill. Check the cooker. Remember the other case we uh, heard about? I'm not opening the fridge. I know that. No, it's just a... Oh, sure. Dear. Cleaning, yeah? Wonderful, yeah. Okay. All oh, shut. I think I need to go in there again. If someone's left with nothing and no one, that's when it brings you home to you, thinking that this person died alone. It could have been there for quite some time. And that's, uh, it's distressing.
21st birthday. What was the stepdaughter's oh. name? There we go. Is that who we're looking for? Not, no, it's maybe not. No, it's not. That's for sure. Can you look? Oh, here they are. Look what I found. That's my intestine, oh. I bet it's not signed though. Intended to? Or is it? I don't think, no, it's not a trillion, mate. No, oh, well, not the first always time. Always away, always away. So it's always a case of I'll leave it till tomorrow. Yeah. Trouble is, tomorrow never comes. I've got a list of, of contacts, and I know that there are say, some people around. We've got a letter here. What I've got to do now is just make some general notes that help the undertaker and pass on to the vicar. When you get a letter like this, you can glean quite a lot of information, just things that they, they chat about in the letter. Who did what, why, where, and uh, how. So, okay. Mentions a party. Probably a gregarious woman then. Well, I got a good laugh. Goes on to the party bit. So we bring Dorothy to God and we thank God for her life. Particularly we give thanks for her sense of humour and fun. It's a very special gift. An essential gift, really, in this life and in relating. Also to be able to laugh at ourselves, which I'm sure she did. We just have a moment bringing to God may take a day, it may take five years, but um, people will suffer bereavement in some form within a period of time. My father, who I lost only a week or so ago, I hadn't seen him for 30 years, um, apart from the odd occasional visit. That's a funny one. It it's really is a, um, a weird one because I don't know what I feel. I suppose if I was going technical, I would say that I'm suffering a slight bereavement, um, but with all my background, I'm subduing it. Uh, but that won't work for very long. I'm going to have to talk to myself and come to terms with how I feel. Um, I shall attend my father's funeral because it's right to do so. Um, he was my father, so I shall carry out the duty as, as a son. Um, what I feel when I actually arrive at the crematorium, I, I really don't know, and I'll face that when I come to it. One of my younger brothers and um, and my my only sister Mary, she she uh, they came along. Joe took us out there in his car, and of course Tessa. It was a very short service, of course. You didn't expect anything else because there wasn't a lot I could really say. You didn't have any music, did you? <laughs> Nothing requested. <laughs> Another fee <thing> gone. <laughs> when are you and Jack coming round to uh, to dinner again? I don't know. When are you going to invite well, us? Well, well, we usually do, don't we? Yeah, and once again. a year at least, yeah, mm. didn't we? It's nice. I've got a joint of meat that I'd like to put in with one food for some possible. No, it's no good, John. It's no good in there. No, two seconds, it will be roasted completely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. You wouldn't have anything left. I love have a little look at the spot to see how they're getting on sometimes. No, you don't, you don't see them sitting up anymore. 
Yeah, somebody told me that. Is that was that a fact? It was a fact with the, the old Coke ones, the old Coke creators. Yeah. Because the heat was, um, a, there was a lower heat generated. Yeah. Um, the body basically um, would uh, shrink, mm. I suppose, and you could get a body sort of with a contraction of the muscles and everything, pulling it together. Yeah. You sometimes get, nowadays, um, a leg will creak up um, and stay in that position. But other than that, it's too, just so rapid. Mm. The whole thing's so rapid. Oh, I didn't think that was true. Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get the old flush as well. <laughs> I must get on. Okay, John. Was an organ. He was the only organist that I know that's ever received a standing ovation after a funeral. His hands and feet were an absolute blur, and that's no exaggeration. You couldn't see him move his hands and his feet individually. It was a complete blur. And he was sliding all over that stall and he was doing everything with his feet. Marvellous. And the people just literally stood up on mats and, and just clapped. This sort of job is important to me because it settles me down. I, I, you suddenly come here and it's quiet and it's relaxing, it's meditating in a way. And uh, it, the roar of life suddenly sort of comes to a stop and, and you can sit and think for a minute. Yes, it's very important. I mean, I do uh, a church job on Sundays only depping because with my concert work they are mainly Sunday afternoons and of course you've got to rehearse in the morning to do a Sunday afternoon concert. So um, I can't take up a full time church job but uh, that's the other time when you suddenly come down to thinking, you know, this is relaxing. It's the relaxing part of playing. Because other than that, I mean you're scared to death of, you know, when I'm playing in a show, you know, you've got to hit the right notes all the time. Well, I've got to hit the right notes when you're playing hymns, but I mean, it, it's simpler and um, somehow it works. It works for me anyway. Well, this is a spring show today. It heralds sort of the start of the summer season, which I've been doing, well, in this theatre for the last 17 years. 17th consecutive season. I've got my own fan club, you see, the John Mann Appreciation Society. They're international, would you believe? Um, there are some youngsters in it, but of course the majority of them are called my blue rinse mat me idols, you see. I am to them. <laughs> No, I love them all. They're all super. I mean, they're marvellous to me. They give me all the encouragement in the world. Hi. All ready? Yeah. Have we had clearance yet? I don't think so, no. Mm. Hello? No flower. You're not supposed to wear fresh flowers on the stage. Why not? I don't know, it's supposed to be bad luck. No. But I wouldn't have any option because I get loads of them. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big welcome on stage, ladies and gentlemen, John Mann. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. That's lovely. Welcome to the uh, show here at the Worthing Pavilion. And this is my spring effort, you see. And it's nice now, isn't it? Because it's a sort of a preamble getting ready for the summer. What a thought. Isn't that nice? Yes. <laughs> Speak to me, for God's sake. Don't sit there as if rigor mortis is setting in, please. <laughs> Comedy is is important in this world you've got to laugh and uh, it can be on both sides of the fence with funeral work and um, theatre in the theatre of course um, it's all contrived and meant but in, in funeral work of course it, it sometimes comes to you unknowingly all sorts of things happen which uh, you know become amusing and we have lots of laughs backstage uh, the funerals at the crematorium, but we also, uh, as soon as we, it's like walking out onto the stage, really. The, the face goes mm, like this, and, and we're on, you know. Oh, Gary, it's Elsie. Sorry to bother you, but we've got a call out. All right. Uh, comms have just phoned. There's a uh, possible suicide, possible RTA on the, um, all right, just under the bridge. Okay, then. Oh, yep, I know. As you know, I haven't got a car, so if you could go there and assist there. The doctor has yep. been. Right. Uh, Teresa is the coroner's officer dealing. She's going right. to pick me up, and we'll meet you down the mortuary because they're going to try and do a possible ident later on because somebody has reported this person missing, or a right. person missing. Okay. All right, um, then. I'll, I'll cover the scene. Right. And then I'll keep you posted from there, and then um, once we're on our way back, I'll let you know. Give us a ring. Yeah. Okay. We should be at the mortuary. No problem. All right, see you later. Right. I'll see you later, boss. Bye. Bye. As it stands at the moment, they think she's been struck by a car. Um, this sort of situation, you can never actually say whether it's definitely a suicide or an accident. You know, even if you sort of find later at the post-mortem examination that, you know, that whatever injury she's got, you're never really going to be certain in whether she actually, unless you've got witnesses who actually saw her jump in front of the car or stand in front of a car or lorry or whatever, you're never, you're never going to, uh, you're never going to find out properly. Right, I'm going now back to the mortuary to meet up with Elsie and the police are going to go and do their part and collect the parents and see if they can um, get them down to us. In the meantime, we'll tidy her up a little bit and uh, make her look presentable and then we'll, um, we'll let the parents see her and uh, do a formal identification. Suicide, isn't it? It's definitely. Yeah, she's but then again, if she's been laying in the road, she's been hit by another car. Mm. It's not the car, that the actual bloke we've been talking to, she's been hit by another one. Oh, right. mm. Quite a knife at the top, when of, I, um, top of the hill, then. Mm. So she's injured. She's definitely been hit. Yeah, she's dragged, isn't she? Been dragged, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. And she's been head first in the road, and the car's tracked to the right way. Alright, well, then we'll undress. How long are you? Uh, so we always do she get knee injuries with the bumps, don't yeah. we? Yeah. It's going to be a classic, isn't it? There's Mr. Drink Drive visitor, even though she's still suicidal yeah, in yeah, the boat. Yeah, yes, I mean, yes. I'm not saying she's not, I'm not, no, not no, like no. that, but no, I, I mean, mean, he might have thought, well, I'm hot, yeah. And the other bloke's hit her. I mean, that'd be a shame for the other bloke, actually, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think she has come off it. And then been hit by a car. You think she might have come off the yeah. bridge? She's, she's got an awful lot of injuries. I mean, all this is. Squat. I just think it's a very wicked world now um, and I think a couple of things have affected me the Brighton bombing affected me um, we worked all weekend and you sort of I went home and you sort of thought you know somebody's just wanted to blow everybody up um, they didn't know the people why you are, I think you asked why is, is the question Yeah. 
I don't want a funeral torn. I'd go up in a bin liner. I don't want anything religious at all. I think sometimes with this work, you, you lose your religion because you, you see some horrible things and you wonder if there is a God up there. Uh, and I don't think there is, really. Uh, he wouldn't let a lot of it happen. Well, I say, I always, I always think like that uh, while you think about them, then they're never really sort of gone, are they? You know, it's if true. that's, yeah. as long as somebody remembers them, then it's... Yeah, uh, that's how they want it, really. They don't want, probably don't want you to well, yeah, gloat too much, really. It's like my mum always says, she'd rather have the flowers while she's alive and above ground and can smell them. Well, <laughs> than that's when right. she's under the ground and can't, so... Yeah, that's true. You know, it's... Um, yeah, they never, they never get any bloody flowers when they're alive, and they get... Yeah, 300 they get, when they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> so hundreds of pounds worth that gets chucked on a bin, do not it? Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. That, uh, such is well, life, I suppose. Nice, I suppose. I yeah. <laughs> keeps well, the florist going, doesn't it? Keeps the florist going, <laughs> yeah, gives them a nice trade, doesn't it? Yeah. So I suppose it's like everything else, isn't it? I mean, probably the only certainty in life is that one day you're going to snap it. Yeah, I suppose if you didn't die, we wouldn't have a job here, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it keeps us in work, I suppose, isn't it? Out of arm's way. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Moo. <laughs> <laughs> Moo who? Go on. Oh. No. Moo? No. no. Oh, no, it should be what? No. What? It should be what? What who? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh lord. Hannah Bulldog. Diplock, Orlock, Padlock. Padlock? Yeah. Probably yeah, the padlock. Yeah. It. There's, got, there's got to be a better way of earning a living, doesn't there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Death is no respecter of position. And from the highest to the lowest, you're going to wind up in either a cemetery or a crematorium. So when people say to you that, um, oh, my job's indispensable or I'm indispensable, you can just cast your eye around the 50 odd thousand graves in this cemetery and say, yeah, well, there's probably an awful lot of people out there that thought they were indispensable as well. And none of us are. When it comes right down to us, none of us are. Um, it's a damn certainty that we come into this life with nothing and we're going to go out with it with nothing. Uh, you make the best of it of what's in between and, and put up with it. If you're lucky, you get a good one out of it. If you're not lucky, you don't. But you've got a very short life and a very long time dead, so you might as well make the best of what you've got and just get on with it. Don't whinge and whine about it, just get on with it. I can't, I can't stand windows and whiners. If I can please somebody and cause the atmosphere that music can make, whether it be a funeral or a church service or a show, that's what I have to do, make the thing come alive. What will they play for me? Well, I hope they'll play... I don't know whether they'll play any of my CDs. <coughs> They're on sale. Mm -hmm. But no, I'd like... Well, I'd like to have a little bit of Saint-Saëns Organ Symphony, and I'd like to have the Adagio in G minor by Albanoni, and I'd like to have a whole collection of hymns. I'll keep everybody hanging around and singing as they've sung for me what would be my career, really. So I'd, I'd like a lot of, I'd like the works, I really would, yes. I, I, I want to go out with a big noise. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.